welcome back students so today we are going to discuss about a uh, back chemical test that is done for detection of amylase okay enzyme detection amylase or even the test is known as starch hydrolysis whether your culture is able to hydrolyze starch by production of amylase okay so amylase is an enzyme that is commonly added to laundry detergents to remove stains containing starch okay so that's the application of amylase okay so if you have a question in your vivas asking uh, examiner asking you about why you study this type of enzyme what is the purpose of doing this test okay so this is the answer application of the enzyme is the answer here okay so the test of starch hydrolysis is used with a wide variety of organisms okay many many organisms are able to produce amylase now starch is composed of two polysaccharides okay amylose and amylopectin usually in the ratio of 1 is to 4 to 1 is to 5 okay so now even you have to uh, read and remember about starch you just can't focus on amylase okay you need to know about the polysaccharide and the ratio then the structure etc now starch granules when they are heated in water they swell and the amylose fraction it diffuses into the solution that means it gets dissolved whereas amylopectin it remains insoluble okay now both amylose and amylopectin are made up of d glucose units okay but it is a polysaccharide that means multiple glucose units are bind to one another okay that's how the chain of starch is made in amylose the glucose units are linked by 1 4 alpha glucosidic bonds and in amylopectin the glucose units are linked by both 1 4 alpha glucosidic bond and 1 6 alpha glucosidic bond okay there are two types of bonds because amylopectin has the branching then amylase catalyzes or catalyzes the hydrolysis of 1,4 alpha glucosidic bonds of polysaccharides such as starch and glycogen. Okay, amylase it hydrolyzes what 1,4 alpha glucosidic bond. There are two types of amylase: alpha, which is endoamylase, and beta, which is exoamylase. The hydrolysis of starch proceeds by first breaking the starch into dextrin, which is the small chain of glucose units okay and then into maltose which is which has two units of glucose and finally converting the maltose to dextrose okay now the endoamylase it acts internally and it breaks or hydrolyzes alpha 1 4 um, glycosidic or glucosidic bonds and beta amylase which is exoamylase it hydrolyzes alpha 1 for glycosidic linkage from the non reducing end okay to produce maltose that is the difference between endo and exo then this is the structure of amylase and amy sorry amylose and amylopectin so amylose you can see it is a linear molecule okay which has alpha 1 for glycosidic bond or glucosidic bond and amylopectin is a branched molecule okay so where the branching comes there you will see alpha 1 6 glucosidic bond okay and the linear chains will have alpha 1 4 bond then you can see a general um, reaction of amylase so starch in presence of water alpha amylase will act and will convert into dextrin okay smaller chains of uh, d glucose units then again it will act on the dextrin to convert maltose and maltose is then converted to glucose that's how starch is hydrolyzed okay then this is another example or sorry another image here where you can see the action of alpha amylase beta amylase and limit dextrinase that is the another enzyme that acts on starch okay so you can see this this is the non-reducing end this is the reducing end okay and 
similar goes for the beta amylase. So you can see in case of beta amylase from the non-reducing end, the enzyme will act. Okay. And in case of alpha amylase, internally the bonds will be broken of alpha 1,4 glucosidic bond. Okay. Now, after doing the test where you uh, add gram iodine to the plate, these are the images you can uh, observe. This is the positive image for starch hydrolysis. This is the negative one. Okay. So for now, just remember this, uh, these images as we will study the test further. So starch agar. So how it is made? So one gram of soluble starch is added to 100 ml of distilled water. Then heat the solution till it becomes clear as we need to dissolve starch properly. Then you add the ingredients of nutrient broth. Okay. pH is adjusted after the media is cooled to the ambient temperature. Then you add agar and then you autoclave for 121 degrees Celsius for 15 minutes. And after cooling it for around 50 to 60 degrees Celsius, you pour your plates and then plates are allowed to solidify do sterility testing for 18 hours and you use them for testing. Now you need grams iodine solution or iodine solution for uh, interpreting your results. Okay. So once the plates are made, sterility testing is done. What you do? You inoculate your cultures which you have, which you want to test for starch hydrolysis or for amylase. You can do a streaking pattern inoculation or spot inoculation okay then once you have inoculated incubate your pleats for 24 hours or say max 48 hours but mostly in for 24 hours you get your results for amylase okay then after incubation uh, what you have to do you have to add iodine solution okay so now what you will do if you don't have a ready-made bottle of iodine solution in your lab you can prepare the iodine solution by using potassium iodide 10 grams in 100 ml of distilled water and add iodine crystals of 5 grams. Okay. Once the potassium iodide is dissolved, slowly after that you add iodine crystals while shaking it. Okay. Then you filter and store your iodine solution properly in a tightly stoppered brown bottle. Okay. Now we have seen this. So once your incubation is done, you will take your plate, you will aseptically, you will add the iodine, gram iodine solution to your plate and let it react for one minute and then drain off the excessive iodine solution and wait for your results. Okay, that's how the test is done. Now, iodine reagent is used for detection of ability of bacteria to hydrolyze starch. How? The typical blue color obtained when iodine is added to starch, it is mainly due to amylose fraction. It is known to absorb iodine, the amylose fraction, as iodine fits in the helix of glucose units that make up the amylose to form blue inclusive compound. Okay, so one, uh, um, one tricky part here is in your bibles you will get this question that why the rest of your media it catches the typical blue color okay gradually it turns brown but initially you will find it as blue color okay so the main reason here is the amylose fraction which is soluble it absorbs iodine as it fits into the helix of glucose units so the amylose fraction is soluble it but it is not hydrolyzed yet okay then the amylopectin, it gives red to violet color with iodine. Now, once the organism to be tested is subculture or say spot inoculated to on the media that contains starch and incubated for 24 hours. After incubation, a iodine solution or grams iodine is flooded into medium. Excessive uh, solution is drained off and a blue color in the medium indicates the unhydrolyzed starch. Okay. And the area where blue color the area where blue color is absent or where clear zone is observed it is indicate indicated as starch is hydrolyzed okay so it is an important reaction 
and you have to read the results immediately after addition of the iodine because the blue color formed with starch may fade out okay so other solutions that you can use to read the results are benedict's reagent which reacts with the glucose that means the hydrolyzed part and 95% ethanol which reacts with the precipitate or which reacts to precipitate it, precipitate the unhydrolyzed starch okay so this is the hydrolyzed starch that will give the glucose so that can be detected by benedict's reagent and 95% ethanol to detect the precipitate of unhydrolyzed starch okay so this was about amylase or starch hydrolysis test so thank you for watching i hope this video is useful to you all so like my videos do share my videos with your friends and do subscribe to my channel